We've seen some crazy decks this season of the Illustriad, but I don't think you're ready for what you're about to watch. Words takes on Espira in a must-win clash for the Imperowatz. Don't forget to check out the Illustriad website for up-to-date standings and much more. Espira starts his opening with a big altar of stars hit and a handful of other hollows, but then sheds some light into his thought process for later this season. So obviously we're doing a team format thing, but you there's the consideration that we're gonna be playing against our teammates if we make it into the playoffs. And this is where Pandora's box is really strong because obviously, uh, you know, our entire team has the crowd for an engine available to them if they want. Espira keeps the hits going with Viserys and Rise from the Ashes. Some pretty cool cards for himself and his teammates. Words on the other side lands a Flamamoth, a Sonicor, and Divine Blessing. Some great cards he can use in his myriad of different deck building options. He uses these new pulls to trade with teammate Trishula to get an EQ, Galaxy, and a Morfrost Terraform. I'm super curious what strategy Aspir is going with this week. Let's hear from the man himself. So this week, honestly, our pulls didn't allow us to change too much about what we were going to do against any of the Imperowats. So against Wurtz, he's doing his fire stuff potentially, and there's so many different lines he could do between his fire combo stuff or just eruption me out of the game, which has really been a detriment to me this entire uh, Illustriad. So with that in mind, I think we just play a strong mid-range game and hope to be able to tempo him out. So with that, we're going to take the same deck that we took last week, not too many changes to be making, to be honest, and hope that it's able to get us the distance. You heard him. Tempo is the game plan, and Cryovern does just that. The consistency of this deck with Narpoon and Astrabit is off the charts. We just know that words had to be in the kitchen this week. Let's see what he cooked up. The biggest thing about my card pool right now is that I have a ton of mix up I can do. So I'm mixing it up this week where we're going to be running Thunder. So starting off with a Thunder uh, race to the top four for removal. Uh, Frost has really low defense stats. So pretty much everything plus race to the top destroys things. Uh, so I have two Jolton, three Mental Lenses, three Rabbits. Three rest of the tops, just removal consistency packages. Next up, I have a, a small frost package because we're playing penguins. It's a frost thunder deck. Shout out to the Imperowatts. Uh, two earth coats, a frigid cup. So the earth coats are shields on a body. We have two snow waddles because we were playing both frost thunder ascensions in this deck. So let's search those out. Speaking of penguat, I have one of penguat. It's fine. It's a five seven. Seven is relevant against. Cryovern because it'll be a wall against Cryovern decks. Nar to Narpoon to search out all my one frost one drops, which is why I run weird ratios of all of them because I just plan to use Narpoon to find whatever I don't have or what I need. A oh, one of them frost ticks. Uh, as I mentioned, we're running both Thunder Frost Ascension, so Rice Ridge, and to go with Rice Ridge. Three Rice Saros. So the Rice Saros is stall. It a necklace and a bag of wins. So bag of wins is I only have one. I'd run two if I could. So instead of running two bag wins, I have one necklace of harmonia. That is either backup, I can throw it on like a rabbit or an earth goat or something to just attack over or attack into something that I can't get over otherwise. Necklace is generally gonna be a Nexus bank or it's gonna be something to shenanigans my opponent with. And then lastly, of course, two Imperowatts. That's generally what the deck's trying to do. We're playing a control deck, a control thunder deck basically that's gonna end on Imperowatt, blow up board, hit face directly um i would like a better win con i think i have a really really good early game stall package against the frost decks i just don't have the most consistent win con in the world but we'll see what happens Imperowat with Riceros and Riceridge is so spicy. This has to be one of my favorite builds all season long, and I'm super curious how it'll fare against this powerful Frost deck. Words donned in his penguin suit. Gonna start this one off with an Astrabid, a very powerful Thunder Elestral that will allow him to look at the top three cards of his deck and add one to his hand. We all know what the rabbit does he's gonna set some face down runes here and i'm very excited to see what words can do he's utilizing a strategy that we have not seen this season riceros and rice ridge incredibly powerful defensive thunder illustrials that can prevent attacks from coming in and can also basically quick ascend into a very powerful defensive wall so i think that, that could be really interesting and then more importantly we know he's rocking a couple imperowats too which can be very strong with their destruction effect and their Nexus effect. I think there's a lot of potential here. We're going to see the Astrava come out on Aspira's side, gaining the same advantages that Wurtz is, and they've got double rabbits out here. Unfortunately, 
Neither caster really to gain, able to gain a ton of information on what the opponent is doing. And Wirtz is basically going for this continuous combo game plan. We've seen him do it early in the season where he's going to use these early turns to find the combo pieces he's looking for. He's going to slowly try to whittle away at what Aspira is trying to do. And ultimately, when we get to a mid or late game game state, that's when Wirtz is going to try to find the window of opportunity to pop off on his combo and ultimately seal the deal. We saw with Trifernal. We've seen it time and time again. So it's no surprise to see the re-enchant on the rabbit. And Aspira is going to trade with the same idea. And they're laughing because they know both of them are just going to funnel up their rabbits and try to get their game plans going. So that way they can execute their intended combos. And in the case of Aspira, he's looking to get out his Cryo Verns, of course. He's looking to get out his Shiveror. There's a Mount Olympus here. This could be big for Wurtz because Mount Olympus almost certainly means that Race to the Top is coming. But rather, Circle the Sky is coming. And he's going to actually Nexus from the Olympus onto the Rabbit, giving him an additional, uh, you know, draw. And then, of course, Rabbit's look effect. So some really uh, advantageous positioning there from Wirtz, utilizing Circle the Sky. Some tech we've seen from the Imperobots all season long. Trishla kind of pioneering it as well. And here comes a very interesting tech card, the Earth's Coat, which I love in this one, especially in the context where Aspira is utilizing a lot of big beaters. And for him to really gain advantage, he's going to want to be attacking directly here. Here comes another Mount Olympus from Wirtz. So Wirtz set up perfectly over these last couple turns. I'm very curious, is he going to race now? He does go for the race at the top now. So perhaps that Circle the Sky play got him the com uh, combination pieces he was looking for. And that's a big swing there, clearing the rabbit, getting his own rabbit into attack with the Earth Goat. And now he's able to chip away for three Spirits of Damage. And if you're a Spira here, none of these Elestrals, you really want a Shield of Achilles right now. You don't want a Tsunami these two. You don't really want a Gorgon's Gaze either of them. This is a situation where you're forced to simply just take the three spirits of damage and now Aspira looks to draw from the top of his deck words with a powerful board state here but do not forget Aspira's use of the potential mountains of boreas which again is kind of you know not nearly as effective against the earth scope but here comes cataran this is a great card for Aspira right now cataran is a bit counterproductive to his cryoburn strategy but at this point in the clash i don't think that's an issue He's looking like he's trying to figure out how do I break this board here because don't forget that Rabbit is buffed up, but there's the Mountains of Boreas, the exact card that Aspira needs. And I think one thing to really note here is Wurtz has already used two of his Mount Olympus in this clash. Mountains of Boreas may just be here to stay. That is a big deal. This four attacking Catarant is going to run into a Shield of Achilles now as well. Again, not the worst situation if you're a Spira, though. You know, okay, I can cast my Cataran out again, and it's going to get healed up. So, not the end of the world. But you do give Wurtz a little bit of an opportunity here to gain some more momentum. And he's going to do just that with Astrabbit. Huge. That's like the fourth or fifth time this Clash that Wurtz is able to get Astrabbit's effect to hit. And anytime you can do that, you're going to gain a tremendous amount of advantage because that card is just so strong. Earth's Goat is going to fire off an attack. I am a little surprised to see Wurtz take the defensive positioning with both Rabbits, but I guess his thought process is this makes sure that the Catarant doesn't beat me and I can keep my Rabbits on field. We know he's going to be trying to ascend into a Rise Ridge or his Imperowat, so keeping those Rabbits healthy is important, but the Catarant is going to heal up two Spirits here. And now if you're a Spirit, you have to decide, do I want to go after this Earth's Goat? I think you do. I think this is your window of opportunity to try to take out the Earth Goat, understanding, hey, if my Cataran gets bounced back, really not the end of the world. But it does look like he's just going to pass here. He's going to opt to not attack the Earth Goat. I'm a little surprised about that one, if I'm being honest. But here comes a big play from Wurtz. The Helios Chariot Ride is here. That is going to prevent Aspira from utilizing either of his two face down runes. This could be devastating for Wurtz. Here comes Hephaestus, the Divine God of Fire, and the only Divine that Wurtz is allowed to use. He's going to disenchant and grab his artifact rune. What will it be? It could be Bag of Winds. It could be Necklace of Harmonia. It's going to be Necklace of Harmonia, a card we haven't seen played at all this season. Necklace going to buff an Elestral by five attack. Five attack, but it comes at the costly effect of having to expend spirits at the end of the turn because the Necklace stays on the field. So you generally want to make sure that if you're going to use this card, that you're able to use it in a way that you can kind of gain proper advantage. But it looks like he's actually just going to circle the sky from the Necklace of Harmonia onto his rabbit to proc rabbit's effect and allow for an additional draw, but get those spirits on the field 
And don't forget, his game plan here is to get out Imperawatt. Are we about to see the biggest Imperawatt explosion of all time? We are! The Triple Ascend! All three Elestrals are going to funnel into an Imperawatt right now. And it's going to use its effect to Nexus those Spirits from Hephaestus onto the Imperawatt. And it's going to be sitting at seven Spirits right now. And it can disenchant three of them to destroy the field. He's going to take the Frost and the Thunder... He's going to blow up the field on a spear side. And now the Mountains of Boreas is gone as well. And now Imperawad can charge forward and deal four spirits of damage with a bag of winds to boot. How does Aspira break this incredibly powerful Imperawad? Absolutely insane place from words, but it has brought him down to just two spirits. I do want to note that that Mountains of Boreas should be gone. I don't know if uh, if they if they catch that later on in the clash, but what an insane play from Words, bringing him down to just two spirits. It looks like they did wipe the Boreas. What does George do here? I am going to be really interested to see how he gets around this because you not only have to get rid of the Bag of Winds somehow, right? Because you can't target the Imperawatt at this point. You're going to need to get out, get rid of the Bag of Winds, and then you're going to need to to destroy the Imperawatt. Or you have to find a way to attack over it. And I'm not sure that Aspira has anything that can do that. Does Aspira have any way to attack over it? Tsunami's not going to work against Imperawatt. Eruption doesn't work against Imperawatt because it's a fire enchanted Elestral. This is actually an insane setup from Words as we see the Astrabit from Aspira as a desperate try to find some resources to get back into this one. But Words with an incredible game plan. I am just absolutely blown away at his strategy here. Here comes a Nectar of the Gods to draw two cards. I mean, just insane. I don't think I've ever seen in a competitive setting Imperawatt do what Imperawatt just did. Absolutely epic. Let's see here. And Infrostix comes out. That does give a Spear the chance to grab something from his Underworld. I'm curious if it's going to be the Catarant. We already saw him cast this turn. So he does go Catarant. That's going to allow him to heal. But again, if you can't stop the Imperawatt here, you're in big trouble. The key to this now, Aspira is going to be searching for a Shield of Achilles. That is what he needs. If that face down rune is Shield of Achilles, he legitimately probably straight up wins the Clash. So Wurtz is going to be faced with the decision. Do I play around that? Do I find another way around that? He does enchant the Imperawatt to make it even stronger, and he is going to take out the Rabbit, so no Shield of Achilles. That is the one out for Aspira. Shield of Achilles. Very, very interesting. I'm actually surprised a little bit to see Wurtz go for that enchant, but he might be setting up for another destruction effect, thinking if I can do one more big boom later in this clash, I could probably just win straight there. With only one Spirit to go, Wurtz is in a tough spot. Well, he's in a really great spot, but he's going to have to make sure that he does not run into a Shield Mountains of Boreas is out, and Ascension is coming through. Shivroar is going to hit the field right now, and it's going to be buffed up to 9 attack. Now, it's worth noting that the Imperawad does receive a benefit from that Frost Spirit as well here. So, that is pretty big. He can use Shivroar's effect to enchant it again. Another Frost Spirit to the field. Seems like Aspira's thought process is, how do I get my Shivroar to be stronger than Imperawad? I don't know if he has a way to quite do that. But this is a really epic showdown now. And it's going to again come down to does a spear have a way to stop Imperawad here with a shield of Achilles. Here comes the attack. This is going to be deal big damage. He could try to stop him with a Gorgon's Gaze. No, you can't. Bag of Wind says no. He's checking three face down runes, hoping that some way it turns into a shield of Achilles. And it's not going to. Shivroar gets blown back. Aspira forced to take what looks to be three spirits of damage, I believe. From that massive blow and he's got to just be so puzzled right now thinking to himself i i gotta find my out and that was his real big chance to try to come back words down to zero spirits he's smiling with a penguin on his head and he just he realizes somehow some way he may have actually d did work in the illustrian and picked up wins with trifernal and imperawatt this season something i don't think anyone would have ever had on their totally fictional bingo card that we mentioned many times throughout the season. Aspira hanging on once again. Going to go for the Cataram play. Going to heal up a couple spirits again. Try to stay in this as long as he possibly can. 
the Gorgon's Gaze is going to pull off the Imperawatt and stop that play from happening, preventing Cataran from healing and giving Wurtz an even bigger window of opportunity to win this because now you can't even shield the Imperawatt because you're going to need to pay one Spirit to cast the shield and three for the cost of Imperawatt and a Spirit only has two left. Imperawatt takes him down. A Spirit needs Ambrosia and Shield now to be able to win this one. A Water Spirit comes out. It's going to be Narpoon. No, a Misenchanted Cryoling. Oh, no. Word Straws. He sets a rune. Imperawatt swings again. Cryoling goes down. And Imperawatt continues to dominate for Wurtz and the Imperawatts in a clash that I never thought I would see. Espira passes his turn. Wurtz draws. Imperawatt fires. And that is G. He's got the shield now, but it's too late. It's too late. Imperawatt wins it. Congratulations to Wurtz for picking up the W behind the incredible Frost and Thunder Elestral Imperawatt. What a crazy clash. Stay tuned as we get another one tomorrow. Absolutely massive.